Professor of Law at Vrij University in Brussels. Joris van Hoboken joins us now. Uh, good to have you on the show, sir. Um, so it looks like Facebook finally made good on its threat. I mean, as a law professor, let me ask you, is this even legal? And if it is legal, is it even good practice? So, like, that, that's a terrific question. I mean, it, uh, ultimately, this is uh, still legal uh, probably for Facebook to do as they're not under an obligation to provide these services uh, in, in our countries. Uh, I mean, of, obviously, it depends on the particular legal system, but I don't know uh, that in, in Australia they're under any kind of special legal obligation to provide services to provide access to news. Um, regardless of that, of course, the question is, like, is this a responsible move? I think it's quite clear that it's quite irresponsible and it shows, you know, to some extent, like how services like Facebook's, uh, but there are other services that could be mentioned, have, have started to get, get such an important role in our societies that, you know, they really become utilities that we all rely on. So just cutting the surface is, is, is become, becomes then a very irresponsible move. Yeah, I know. I understand the fact that, that, you know, these companies aren't obliged, they're not required by law uh, to give news. But at some point, uh, you know, there's going to be a tipping point. You know, if, if people are going to say, well, if I'm not getting this, 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 this from Facebook, I'm no longer going to use this platform. Yeah, so and I think that that's currently then would be the mechanism. You leave it up to the market, you leave it up to consumer choice. The big kind of open question there is, of course, if there's abuse of dominance here. You know, and there's there, there there are similar situations also in Europe and dynamics around a similar law that was adopted, the copyright in the, the copyright in the digital si single market directive that was adopted recently, and you know, like there, you see that from a competition uh, point of view, you see some potential action. So, like around abuse of dominance of uh, of these uh, of these companies. So there's like a little bit of a legal case, but ultimately, you know, it's still left. Uh, to the market and to consumer choice, you know, what happens in these kinds of uh, situations. Um, Facebook and other companies uh, like this are perhaps some of the richest companies on the history of this planet. Some of them are worth in excess of a trillion dollars. I mean, um, surely they can afford uh, to pay for news. I mean, or is it really not about money? No, I think that is uh, that is definitely uh, true. I mean, they prefer to pay as, as less as possible, of course. But you see also just announced like a really big deal between Google and News Corporation, you know, which is quite relevant also from an Australia context where, you know, payments are being agreed between the large platforms and news publishers. The really big question is, you know, how is like when you introduce these kind of laws that require new payments, you know, you create a lot of new transaction costs. And this could have huge implications also for the diversity and pluralism of the news environment, you know, where the big publishers manage to enter into these kind of negotiations with the big platforms, but the smaller publishers and independent outlets, you know, they are left uh, uh, behind. Uh, and because it's not, it's not only a matter of whether there's the money to pay, but also the organizing, like all the licensing that is then required by these types of laws. Mm, tell me this. I mean, what do you think this says about big tech in general, because what ha what's happening in Australia could very well happen in, in uh, other parts of the world. I mean, is this basically them saying, you know what, I don't care about the laws, I'm bigger than governments. Yeah, and I think like, I mean, just to be sure, there have been somewhat similar cases also in Europe. There was a case longer ago, you know, between the search engine Google and uh, news publishers in Belgium, where uh, uh, Google uh, for a while uh, stopped uh, operating the Google News service. There have been cases also in Spain and in Germany where similar laws were tried. And so it's like, I think in the end, you know, what you see also and you currently see with the backlash is that I really think that the platforms are really underestimating, you know, the kind of infrastructural position they have get, gained in our societies. And, you know, I really think they won't be able to get away with these types of uh, nuclear options, you know, which is like from a normal commercial point of view, maybe for them makes a lot of sense. But considering the societal position and importance of their services, it's just not acceptable anymore for them to behave like that. So I think it can really backfire and really end up you know, creating laws that make that my answer to the first question that you asked different. It will no longer be legal for them uh, to act to act in these uh, types of ways. Here's, I want to ask so you. It's like uh, I, 
Yeah, yeah, a, a, a theor theoretical question, um, you know, and it may not be the best question to ask a law professor, but let me have my jab at it. Um, there's this phrase that sort of goes back to um, how the advertising world on television was described in the 1970s is that, you know, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. Who's the product here? And if we're the product, should we be paying for it? Yeah, that is, I mean, it's an excellent question. I mean, the business models around some of the really big kind of platforms that are playing such a crucial role in access to information, they have this advertisement-based business model that creates all sorts of incentives for these companies that are not aligned with high-quality journalistic content. And, you know, as much as, like, the platforms are having programs to tackle some of these issues, it remains a really important question. And, you know, public investment you know, an independent journalism and a well-funded journalism is just such of crucial importance for, for our democracies that, you know, like leaving it to these types of advertisement-based business models to be such crucial uh, platforms for our democracies uh, is, a, is, a, is a real uh, concern. All right. Joris van Homboeken, I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you very much for uh, this analysis and insight. Do appreciate it.